Okay, uh, so let's continue. So we defined the security definition already. So, uh, so this is all single shot, but uh, let's uh, move to IID, asymptotic case. So x i y i uh, sequence of uh, uh, sequence of uh, IID random variables. Uh, in this case, uh, we can define. Uh, something called OT capacity. So this concept was introduced by uh, Nascimento Winter. So uh, oh, sorry. Uh, before introducing this, uh, we have to introduce. L of epsilon delta 1, delta 2 of x, y as the uh, max, maximum length uh, such that uh, the epsilon delta 1, delta 2 OT exists. Uh, then we, in asymptotic case, uh, we just plug this x n y n into this and uh, normalize it and take limit, and uh, we also take limit of these three uh, three security parameters. Uh, so this is the O T capacity. Uh, introduced by Nascent Winter, uh, but uh, this OT capacity is not known in general, uh, and uh, for some special cases, uh, the problem is solved. One typical example is the following: so it's called erasure uh, correlation. So x and y, uh, something like this. So it's binary. X is binary, and y is zero and one and some erasure. And x is uniform, half half. And the uh, correlation between x and y are something like this. So with probability p, uh, it is erased. And with probability 1 minus p, uh, x and y just coincide. And in this case, uh, we know the OT capacity. Uh, so this was shown by Imai, uh, Nascimento, uh, Morozov, uh, <coughs> Morozov, yes, Morozov in 2006 for p equal half, and general general case was shown in. Also, at CISAR in 07 paper, conference paper. And the uh, OT capacity is simply given by the minimum of P and 1 minus P. OK? So, so P is always 0, 1. Uh, B is always 0 and 1, yes. Yeah. Oh, B, B also increasing is, uh, so this B, binary B is usually called two out of one uh, oblivious transfer. And uh, in general, we can think about M out of uh, one or M. From the information theory regime, have you, have people studied P or Oh, in information, this kind of channel theoretic study, I have never seen just binary case, I think, yeah. Yeah, so this is this, and uh, so important thing is, so in the case of uh, secret key agreement, uh, correlation is very important. So uh, smaller p is uh, better. So if we have larger correlation, we can generate larger secret key. But in the case of oblivious transfer, uh, we take mean of p and 1 minus p. So 
t equals zero is uh, not good. We need correlation as well as some noise. Okay, this is slight difference from uh, secret key agreement problem. Okay, so. So I'll show one rough idea of uh, one uh, achievability for that. Uh, just so construction is uh, very simple. Uh, so part one observes some uh, binary sequence of length n. And uh, because the X and Y are co co connected by erasure channel, so party two observe uh, n length sequence, so zero one something, but there are some erasures. And the number of erasure is approximately uh, T times n, okay? Then what they do is the following. So the second party picks some set S1, S2. Uh, these are subset of uh, index. So such that uh, uh, for So the, the set correspond that corresponds to B complement, why I must be all erasure, okay? And uh, for indices that corresponds to uh, B, uh, why the value of Y I is not erasure. So the second party <coughs> picks. Uh, to subset S0 and S1 satisfying these conditions. And because there are uh, roughly Pn erasures, uh, we can pick such a set satisfying roughly <coughs> n, n times mean of P, one minus P. So, and uh, L is also set to be this, and uh, the second party just send S0 and S1. And uh, so because uh, erasure occurs independent of X, so this information does not reveal nothing about B to the first party. So the first party gets nothing. and. Uh, First party sends k0 plus x of s0. x of x s0 means uh, we pick a sub subsequence of x and that co corresponds to these indices. And also this. And uh, uh, because uh, for indices that corresponds to B complement uh, Y I is erasure. So party two does not know the value of X I. So uh, uh, K, K B complement is uh, uh, so so uh, the, the, the second party does not know the value of this, so this plays the role of a kind of secret key, so it's, uh, the second party cannot get KB complement, uh, but uh, because of this condition, uh, the second party can subtract this and can get one K, KB only. 
KB, uh, the second party can get, and the KB complement because of this, uh, the second party gets nothing. So this is how rough idea of how we achieve this. Ah, so this is a uh, curious but honest model. So they follow the protocol at least. Yes. Yeah, for malicious case, uh, party two doesn't follow this procedure, and uh, we need to do some hashing argument, and uh, yeah, more complicated. Uh, but we can do it for this malicious case. Uh, which paper? <coughs> Uh, I think, yes, this paper has a malicious case. The Archbishop Cesar is only for. No, no, uh, oh. only on this is only, oh, sorry, okay. This is only for honest curious, uh, but uh, uh, that paper, uh, uh, Nascement Winter 08 paper, have some result on malicious case, and uh, there are some other subsequent works on. Which paper? Those, those, no? Uh, yeah. No, 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 that's very good. So, this. Uh, more, recent, more recent works. Yeah, there are some. Uh, yes, wait a minute. Yes, so, so for malicious case, problem for this Eurasia case was solved for, uh, for p larger than half. And uh, this was solved by uh, Hinto, Dosri, Morozov, and Nascimento in 2011. And, uh, uh, actually, this the capacity is known for a slightly more general version of Eurasia channel, generalized Eurasia channel. Uh, but uh, yeah. Which channel? Uh, that, that, uh, oh, no, no, not the radio channel. This is public interact, public, public yeah, communication. Uh, oh, no, no, no. This is also public communication. Uh, so, radio channel induces correlation between X and Y. Uh, uh, yes, initial, yes, yes. It's source model. So, it's. But, but the channel model is also studied. and. Uh, yeah, more or less the same. We, we have some optimization over input distribution, but uh, similar. OK, so this is. OK, this is achievability scheme. Uh, but the main focus of this talk is uh, uh, impossibility bounds, converse bounds. Uh, so let me review one. Uh, asymptotic converse bound. Uh, okay. So. so this converse bound was shown by Arsene uh, Cisar. Uh, so the OT capacity. is upper bounded by <coughs> minimum of h of x given y and the mutual information between x and y. And uh, uh, because uh, when, when the correlation is erasure, uh, this is p and this is 1 minus p. 
So this bound is tight, known to be tight. Uh, so this is uh, one basic bound. And uh, actually, we can rightly improve this bound, but uh, I, because we don't have enough time, so I don't mention this. Uh, OK, uh -huh. I briefly mentioned this. Uh, so by introducing uh, common information in the sense of gatch kernel, maximum common uh, MCS, ma maximum common function of x and y, and uh, uh, maximum sufficient statistics of uh, uh, y given x. Uh, because I don't have enough time, so I don't write the definition of these guys. But uh, by introducing these ones, we can slightly improve this bound. Uh, uh, <coughs> what? V1 given <coughs> y, and i of x, y given v0. Uh, this is right generalization. And, uh, uh, the usefulness of uh, these quantities in the context of secure computation was introduced by, pointed out by Ulf, Ulf Schreger. Uh, and uh, there is another bound, more recent bound, called tension bound by uh, Prabhakaran, Prabhakaran. Uh, working, I think. Uh, this is uh, more complicated, so I don't write it here. But there are some subsequent works. OK. Yes? Everything on this. Uh, yes, this is IID. Yes, 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 this. Oh, oh but this uh, Wolf Rega paper is uh, just single shot, but uh, perfect security case. Okay, so. By the way, the IID is probably because you want a single letter formula. IID is because? Because you want a single letter formula. I mean, if you're willing to write n letter formula, this is. Oh, yeah, if, we, if we, we are OK with n letter formula, yeah, we can just do with n. And uh, there, are some, there are some residual terms that comes from Fano inequality. Practically? Why is that option? If you are lucky, so maybe instead of having a computational assumption, you're putting an assumption on availability of these resources. Uh -huh. Another application is think of it as a reduction argument, beginning with XY. So this is a converse approach. That's at least for this talk, we'll do converses after this. So, mm -hmm. so you have your XY, which can be anything. Uh, in this case, it's uh, Rab and Bozi. Now, what is the best efficiency with which you can get a two out of one OT out of it? And we'll give a bound for that. I see. Uh, so this reduction is information theory. Labyrinth OT is computational, and after that, you go in for the sincerity reduction. That's the theoretical part of it. Right, right. The one is to be careful combining. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. Uh, the surprising things happen when you yeah, combine. Yeah. Honest but curious right. setting. Uh, it's an honest but curious setting, very simple. Right. right. So with the, in the first setting, if one's imagining a physical source of a correlation, do people look at some kind of robustness that, like, what if I don't know exactly the erasure probability, or I don't know exactly the distribution, but uh, you know, mm -hmm. maybe I have some bounds on the uh, in two directions on the on the channel? Mm -hmm. Do people look at 
of designing kind of protocols that are robust that work for some family of channels simultaneously? Oh, that's, I think, that's, uh, yeah. In, oh, there, there are some results. We call it elastic channels. Yes. Where the, the parameters are in a way. I see. There are some results possible. Or you can look for what we call universal yeah, reserved information theory, which is you want results which will be valid for any IID distribution, but only for a more specific channel like IID, because you can control the size of this channel and uh, that those results are also. So now uh, I'd like to uh, mention about uh, some relationship between uh, this oblivious transfer and secret key agreement. Uh, actually, uh, this bound itself is derived uh, by in, in implicitly using some relationship between uh, oblivious transfer and secret key agreement. And uh, we can formally show the following. So, uh, so the length of epsilon delta one delta two oblivious transfer. Oh, by the way, from this point, uh, single shot, no IID, uh, is bounded by s epsilon uh, delta one plus delta two uh, two delta two uh, x and y. Uh, so this S is uh, the maximum length of secret key that can be generated from this resource. So party one has <coughs> observed this, and party two observed Y. Uh, so this is one bound, and uh, there are two bounds. Uh, so this bound is kind of single shot. Uh, OK. Uh, okay. So we, we have uh, these two, two bounds, and so we have, we need two bounds. Uh, so the second one is the length of oblivious transfer is bounded by S of epsilon plus two delta two, comma, uh, delta one of x, x, y, given y. So this is uh, party one, it's observation. Uh, this is party two's observation. <coughs> and this is Eve Stropper's observation. So the length of uh, oblivious transfer can be bounded by the length of secret key that can be generated in this situation. OK, I, I, I'm going to explain rough idea of this bound later. Uh, but uh, uh, once we have proved this, uh, because we have the length of secret key is, as Himanshu explained, uh, bounded by this hypothesis testing quantity. So, uh, so previously we had some freedom to choose Q, but uh, here we choose Q as conditional independent distribution that is induced from this P. So then we have uh, this bound, and uh, combining this bound, these bounds with this bound. Uh, we can get some impossibility bounds on oblivious transfer lengths in terms of hypothesis testing.
where this eta here is epsilon plus delta 1 plus 2 delta 2 plus xi for some xi, which can be arbitrarily small. Yes. Three questions now. Yes, yes. So in the line with the S epsilon delta, the middle line, no, the third line. Third line. Yeah, what yeah. is eta there on the right hand side? Eta here. Here. This one? Yeah, what's this the this eta can be arbitrary uh fudge parameter oh, okay. between this range. Uh so okay. yeah, in asymptotic range. Yeah, sure, sure. So yeah. the, the second thing is in this uh, the second line of the theorem? Yes, this uh, one. The x and x, the two x's, are they conditionally dependent given y? Or they the yeah, same? so, so, okay. The so, x, 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 y, and x given y, x given y. So, it's a copy of. Uh, no, but the two x's on the left are conditionally dependent given y, or they the same x? Same, same x. Same it's a copy of. So, so, why we do this is. Uh, so, alternative expression for this is. Uh, yes. And the third question is how good are those bounds in your lemma? What about lower bounds? The error in terms of S. Error in terms of S. Is there, how good are those bounds? Oh, error in terms of S. Can you get S in terms of error? S in terms of, uh, so bounding this by using this. Yeah, some functional error. As long as I know, I, there is no such a result, I think. Just one remark on that. So eta, you said, log of, it becomes log of 1 minus uh, epsilon plus that's what we get. So one thing here is that instead of a multiplicative log, loss of 1 by 1 minus epsilon minus this, it's written log of, log of 1 by 1 minus epsilon. It's easier to get a multiplicative log. Okay, so we can get this bound, and uh, so how tight is these bounds? Uh, so, one corollary of these bounds is the following. So, so previously we have had these bounds, uh, which is for epsilon delta one delta two all goes to zero. Uh, but uh, we can define epsilon OT capacity as so that this part is the same as this. And instead of taking limit of everything, we just take limit of delta 1 and delta 2. So we just take uh, limit of securities, and the error part can be arbitrary. Then by combining this and Stein's lemma, uh, we can derive a stronger version of that bound. OK, so this is one advantage to use this any approach. Zero in the for, for, for any, any, yes, for any. Between. Delta 1, delta 2 will satisfy the constraints which we get from there. So, silent plus delta 1 plus 2 delta 2 is less than 1. Yeah. Second constraint. Yeah. Silent plus 2 delta 2 plus delta 1 is the same. It's a kind of partial strong converse. Because of this two factor here, uh, we cannot say strong converse for any epsilon delta 1, delta 2. We have to take limit of delta 1, delta 2. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, the other direction here? The yeah, other yeah, direction. Maybe for, for certain <coughs> XYs, yeah. For, for XY pairs that already have a built in secret key, is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So just, you can do keys, but no secret. Just, if you can do OT, you can do keys. Yeah. You can do the other way around. Right. Yeah. But maybe if the X and Y don't already contain a key, then maybe it uh, might be interesting. In that one, the, the one that has the X, the other has the Y. Uh, 
And then we have to interact between the two. So in, in terms of the secretive capacity, can say nothing about the whole business. Uh, for so, for uh, I think that's obvious to me. For um, if you were discussing that joint arbitrary joint distribution of x y, but let's say that you had uh, some x y distribution that. Uh, let's see. Have to use x, y, but maybe some other like x, x, y, y. How do you rule out that? But for O's, you need like distinct, you know, different distributions that are known to be different for both parts. Because what you're doing is actually the opposite kind of correlation. Let me think about what you're saying. Mm, yes, uh, maybe so. Maybe there is some connection, but uh, in the case of OT, we need both correlation and some noise, so it's uh, slightly different from secret key agreement. So maybe this reduction is just one way, and the other direction, nothing. But I don't know. OK, so uh, okay. So there are two bounds. And so we have two reductions, but uh, maybe we don't have enough time. So we. I'm going to explain one reduction here. So how, how we prove this? So we consider this situation. Uh, so there is hypothetical if. If doesn't exist in OT problem, but we hypothetically introduce eaves dropper here. And, uh, Party one observe k zero k one. Party two observe b, and uh, also x and y. So we consider this situation. And first, uh, the parties run OT protocol. So so the argument is the following: If there exists an um, oblivious transfer protocol, we can construct secret key generation protocol from that OT protocol. So th the reduction argument is the following. So. First, they communicate. And uh, uh, party two will get the estimate of uh, KB. OK, oh, sorry, not complement, KB. Then uh, party two disclose this B over this channel, public channel. Then party one can compute K of B here. And uh, by the way, if you can observe this communication as well as this communication, B. OK. And uh, we use this KB and K hat as a secret key. So how much is this secret key secure? First, reliability condition. Uh, because of the reliability condition of oblivious transfer, this disagreement probability is bounded by epsilon. Okay, and uh, for security. Okay, so by the security of, uh, so this security part is a little bit complicated, but uh, by the security of, for party one, this KB should be almost independent from uh, the transcript and uh, uh, B. And also by the security of, uh, security for the second party, uh, KB bar, sorry, KB bar. Yes, yes, KB bar. Yeah, uh, but uh, this is KB bar, but. No, 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 this is B is fine. Yeah, that's B and the B, B, is, B is fine. But B, B and B bar is, uh, uh, because uh, this B doesn't, is actually not correlated to pi, so it's both is okay. And also, because party one cannot predict the value of b, almost, almost, 
almost. Uh, so, uh, so uh, yes. So actually, so in this reduction, party two actually send B, uh, but uh, B is uh, uncorrelated from uh, what party one observes. So, uh, no, 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 sorry. Uh, actually, B, yeah, uncorrelated from these guys. So. Actually, uh, from the viewpoint of if it's uh, the situation doesn't get better even if party two send B complement, and uh, because from uh, pi and B complement uh, K B cannot be predicted, so we can get security. Uh, this is just rough argument, but uh, by using so this security. Uh, condition for OT, we can get uh, delta 1 plus 2 delta 2 uh, security for this KB, and uh, we can show this bound. Just want to point out, probabilistically, what you've written down makes no sense. I mean, I know, I know what you're trying to say, but somehow yeah, you know, that, B, is, B is equivalent to B bar. And uh, so somehow it doesn't make sense. Of yeah, this uh, argument just heuristic. Yeah, and actually, true. we have to do some yeah, calculation. Yeah, experiment as to what might happen if you had asked for people. Right? Yes, so yes, like yes, 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 yes. It's just thought experiment, right? Uh, so maybe we should move to the next topic here. Yeah. OK. Uh, 1230 is the limit, right? OK. So, OK, this is so relationship between secure computing and the uh, secret key agreement and hypothesis testing. OK, now let's move to third topic very quickly. Okay, so uh, we consider this uh, degraded case. Uh, so we, we consider this case such that x, y, z for Markov chain. And uh, as Himashu explained, uh, for this case, and I, I already set up uh, the length of secret key we can generate, generate from this correlation is close like n times conditional mutual information of x1, y given z plus some o n term. And uh, uh, so now we'd like to focus on some more refined analysis of this term, uh, which is called uh, second order analysis in information theory. Uh, so uh, this second order analysis is becoming very popular topic in information theory these days. Uh, why? So, so this is great. And uh, this asymptotic result says that uh, Asymptotically, we can achieve this rate. We can generate secret key at this rate. Uh, but in practical, the length of n is finite. So it's important to consider uh, the trade off between the efficiency and the block length. And so asymptotically, we can achieve this point. But uh, practically, for finite n, we cannot achieve this asymptotic limit, and uh, the length of uh, secret key that can that we can generate uh, behave like something like this, and uh, gradually we converge to this, and uh, 
So ideally, we would like to completely characterize this curve, but this is quite a difficult problem. Uh, but uh, if we can characterize some co coefficients of this next term, coefficients of square root n, then we can get some good approximation of finite length performance. So it's becoming very popular. To, uh, yeah, actually, yes, plus, uh, yes, U usually it's a minus uh, if uh, epsilon and delta are small. If epsilon plus epsilon and delta are large, it can be plus, but typically it's minus, yes. So, yeah, we cannot achieve this, but we have some uh, back of factor. And uh, so this kind of analysis was first studied by Strassen in his classical paper. It's 63, and uh, it became, uh, for a while there was no this kind of result for a while, but uh, recently by the work of Hayashi, uh, and uh, Koryansky Puaveldu, Uh, this second order analysis became very popular topic. And uh, here, I'd like to discuss uh, what is the second order term of the secret key agreement problem. This is for IID. Uh, this is for IID, yes, yes, this is for IID. IID and, uh, and Markov chain, yes, and, and Markov chain. Yes, because without this Markov chain, this uh, first order is not clear yet, so yes. XYZ, XYZ, Y, X. X, X, Z, Y, then no, no, no key generation. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's another example we can get complete answer. <laughs> 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 OK, uh, so, so to achieve this uh, bound, uh, Himanshu explained we use uh, two step protocol, right? Uh, so first step is uh, information reconciliation. And the second step is privacy amplification. So to send x to the sec se second party, we need this amount of rate asymptotically. And uh, we can generate some secret key of this amount. But because some information is leaked to eavesdropper in the first stage, we have to subtract this amount. And uh, this is how we get this bound asymptotically. And uh, actually, uh, so this information reconciliation is called also known as uh, Slepian Wolf problem in information theory. And uh, this problem is quite well studied and uh, uh, we already know that the amount of uh, rate we need to send x to the second party is given by something like this. So this epsilon is uh, disagreement probability of uh, estimate at the party two side. So this Q inverse, Q, Q function is uh, uh, 
uh, this is ta tail probability of the standard Gaussian distribution. And this v of x given y is uh, a variance of uh, this conditional log likelihood. Uh, and uh, also for privacy amplification problem, uh, this problem is quite well studied and uh, by by applying the central limit theorem to the leftover hash lemma, we can show that the amount of secret key we can generate from uh, x given z is uh, something like this. Uh, something like this. So, uh, for 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 finite n, uh, for information reconciliation, we have to send slightly more, not slightly, uh, more than this rate in this amount. And for key generation part, we cannot generate secret key at this rate, but we have some more penalty term. And uh, in a similar argument as this, uh, if we combine these two steps, we further have to subtract uh, this amount from here. So what we get from this standard protocol is So uh, this part and this, this minus this is uh, this. So we get right first order term. But we have to subtract this minus this and minus this. So So this is a uh, lower bound of secret key generation that can be achieved by this standard two-step protocol. So we have two square root term here. Uh, so is this optimal? Actually, uh, so we showed that. So this is uh, result is by Hayashi and uh, Manchu and me. Uh, so we showed that this is this bound is suboptimal and uh, where v, this variance, is given by variance of So uh, the, the optimal second order rate is characterized by the variance of this conditional mutual information density and Q inverse of epsilon plus delta. So we don't have this, this kind of two separate terms, but we have one penalty term, which is quite, quite interesting, I believe. And uh, so, so this pr proof of this is uh, uh, 
uh, it's quite complicated. So, so co converse part uh, Im immediately follows from the our single shot bound. So we use single shot bound and apply the second order analysis for hypothesis testing problem. Uh, for achievability part, as I explained, this standard protocol doesn't work. So, and uh, this one point, one, one thing I would like to emphasize is that this protocol, uh, so first party sends something and uh, the second party reproduce X and generate secret key. So it's non-interactive protocol. Uh, but to achieve this, we proposed a new interactive protocol and uh, uh, we believe that to achieve this, uh, we need interaction, even though to achieve the first order term, we don't need interaction. That's one thing I would like to emphasize. Uh, maybe should we move to the final part? You have three minutes? For the protocol? So, protocol is. Uh, yes. Yes, that's. Mm, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. If no, no, that con if that condition is not satisfied, yes, but there. Term, it's not known. We don't need interaction. If there was no, that's a separate point. There's another protocol which can get you this uh, okay. without interaction. Uh, that's why he wants to stay with. Uh, okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, so okay. So okay. So. So, okay, very rough idea of how we prove this is the following. So, leftover hash lemma. Uh, so, so by using smoothing technique, uh, Leftover hash lemma, the performance of leftover hash lemma is characterized like, like, uh, like this. Protocol. Uh, oh, okay. Two minutes. Okay. Protocol. <laughs> uh, so yeah. So. So the I, the important idea of the protocol is to use interactive serial coding. Uh, so this was studied by some people in information theory. Draper, zero four, and Enfi Yang He. Uh, and uh, so our protocol is uh, more or less the same as Yang He protocol, uh, but uh, so in the this standard scheme, uh, the length of message, so length of pi, is fixed. Uh, but uh, the main point is we adapt this length to be conditional likelihood of uh, with some some negligible term. So. We like to use adaptive protocol. The, we would like to adapt the length of protocol to be something like this. And uh, so, how do we do this? Uh, so, uh, instead of sending hash values at once, the first party sends some, some hash values first. And then second party tries to decode by using <coughs> this hash value. And if he can't, he sent ACNAC. And they continue this. So <coughs> the first party gradually increase the size of hash. 
And、uh, once this, the size, size of hash value b e c o m e sufficient, then the second party will be able to decode X. And、uh, that happens when the message size b e c o m e close to slightly above this、uh, log likelihood.、Uh, yes. So, this is、uh, very, very rough. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, yeah, very rough sketch of、uh, the protocol. So, so、yeah. one party will tell the other one it's not? Second party, Se second party yeah, send ak nak, and、uh, if he will be able to decode, then stop. So, you are increasing your second party as a guest set for X. So, first guest set, send me some hash. Can、yeah. I find you here? If not, I'll ask for more hash, but also increase my guest set now a little bit. So, I keep on expanding it. I'll stop as soon as I can be put.、Uh, very similar to actually R sync, except that I'm increasing my guest set. R sync, which is a protocol, you fix your guest set to be at one same time. You keep on asking for more hash for the same time. You do now. Say multiple rounds, but I increase my guest set. So, getting a second order result in a generally attractive scenario might be more difficult. Yeah. General, general, no, no this assumption here、yeah, for so far. Okay, this is it. Yeah, this is it. <laughs>